Okay, what we've got here is um, some Zigbee stuff that I'm going to try and integrate with my Home Assistant. Uh, basic Zigbee Hub. Um, this is off uh, a very popular um, website. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. It's just described as a smart gateway. This is just um, powered by USB rather than anything else. And you'll note that it's not got any... Um, uh, RJ45 connectors for Ethernet access to connect directly to your um, internet gateway. So this needs pairing um, with the uh, Toya app and then connects automatically to the uh, the Wi-Fi. Um, as a consequence this has been picked up and recognized straight away by um, Home Assistant which is thankfully sorted a lot of these things out once you've conf everything flows through to the toya um the website if you can set that up then uh, you can get everything working this is a trv for uh, for the radiators in the uh, in the house i'm going to split the downstairs from the upstairs so at night we uh, these whilst the central heating system is controlled by thermostat upstairs um these are going to be um switched on and off according to the uh, time of day and these are some Zigbee switches that I've purchased as well. I think they've been about four, four, five euros each. So I'm going to try and get this um, sorted out very, very soon. The benefit of the Zigbee Hub is that um, it seems to be able to penetrate more, uh, more through the house. So where Wi-Fi might not quite make things Zigbee seems to to get a little bit further I always thought Zigbee was at 2.4 gigahertz which is the same as your, your standard Wi-Fi I know some Wi-Fi's run at 5 but I always thought Zigbee was at 2.4 but this seems to to get signals through uh, more walls maybe it's just slower and a little bit more uh, a little bit more resilience than your, your Wi-Fi signaling but that is just powered by a USB cable um, and that goes into into a wall socket within range of the um, the Wi-Fi uh, router and um, I guess you could probably even plug it into the Wi-Fi router using the, the uh, USB socket but I don't think the signal will be transferred over that over that part of the network anyway it's always going to be a Wi-Fi link back to the router okay so that's set aside this is the Zigbee TRV and the associated adapters for the different um, body radiator bodies. Um, these are quite plasticky and I'm not convinced they hold on to them very well onto the radiator. So I've been using a uh, special type of adhesive to just mount that one on over the existing thread and then this screws straight down onto it and it's essentially a motorized plunger so that little pin in the middle that really really slowly and quietly pushes out and shuts the radiators off and then when you turn it back it pushes back and uh, releases the flow and allows the radiator to heat up the top of it is a twizzle control and there's usually a display in there I'll show you that in a sec okay, I've powered that up now and as you can tell the, uh, the mode is in LA I have to look on the paperwork to remind myself what that is. In terms of batteries, don't use cheap batteries. Cheap IKEA batteries, for example, they they can go rotten. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of benefits to using a decent battery. Um, I do like GP Ultras. They seem to do the job, but um, you really get what you pay for in the battery world. Okay. The cover itself is. It's quite weird, it's like a hollow tube, there's a press button there, you can see the battery symbol on it. And that slides over the top and clicks back in place. Then when you press the button, nothing happens, or it does, yeah, there you go. So I'm um, looking at 16, 17 degrees in the house, it's not that, it's much warmer, maybe it needs a bit of calibration. And you press the button to activate things. And now I've done some sort of timer, so I'll, you know when you do something and there's a knock-on effect on the rest of the uh, install, there you go, that should be about right.
So I'll show you how to pair it. Okay, to get into the pairing state, you've got to turn until you get the OF sign or off, as I think it means. Press and hold that for five seconds and it should enter pairing mode. I'm assuming that's in pairing mode. I wonder. Slides instruction manual. Try again. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's try and pair it. Okay, right, I've long pressed the uh, TRV in the off position, OF, and I've got a flashing light. That should now be accessible from the Zigbee hub that's uh, upstairs. So if I go to Gateway, because it's just a generic hub, click on that, and as you can see I've already got Dining Room Radiator there. So let's add the sub device. It's a, ooh, Ensure device is in pairing mode, yes, okay, LED already blink. And let's see if we can discover the device. Make sure the device is in pairing mode. One device has been successfully added. There we go, Smart Radiator, lovely. Done. Smart radiator thermostat. So let's quickly change that to this is going to be the living room radiator. Um, forgive my grammar. And that's in the living room and done. And that's successfully integrated into the app. It's not the Toya app, it's the uh, Smart Life app, which it runs in symbiosis so you can either use one or the other so there we go so that's adding that and no text so let's try turning it up I'm trying to turn it to 10 degrees and that's me changing the temperature on the radiator on the red TRV itself and then turning it back down on a TRV so that TRV is now communicating with the Zigbee gateway that's communicating with the Wi-Fi network that the Home Assistant sits on. So I'll try and show you in the next screen how to uh, look at it in Home Assistant. So let's turn that back up there. I don't know whether you can hear the valve going. I'm going to put it to my microphone and let's see if we can hear the valve deploying. Possibly. I'm not sure. It's really, really quiet. For, for a, a budget TRV, I've got to say, it's very, very quiet. I was expecting much, much more, much, much more noise. So we'll leave it at that. And uh, the next shot is to be uh, attaching it to the radiator. Okay, I'm going to go to Home Assistant and add that second TRV. So click on the Home Assistant, it loads up very poor day for the panels unfortunately these are the depths of winter um, and we need to basically copy the dining room radiator format as a card so let's go to the three dots at the top right click on edit dashboard all the way to the bottom and click on the three dots to the bottom right of the dining room radiator click on that duplicate card and let's find that entity now if I put in I just by clicking on the entity there, it's looked for the, the right things and it's found the red climate smart radiator thermostat underscore two. So if I click on that and we're going to rename it uh, living room radiator, living room radiator. And my typing is so fast. Press return and there it is. So that's controllable using the, the button there. And now we can also control that using the home automation. So let's save that onto the dashboard. So it's always there and spin back down. And there's the two. 
Okay, we have the, the TRV, the new TRV, connected to the, the original valve body of the radiator. Some people will be familiar with these. I do need to clean under my radiators. Um, press it, and then the temperature stuff comes up. So at the moment, it's saying 16. Radiator is off, so this is just the, the latent temperature of the radiator. Um, when the system's fully up and running, I'll have my central heating on all the time and then controlled all by these. So there'll just be a single loop um, far far away, ready to, uh, to top up the, the heat in each room. There's uh, this valve body, the, the plunger in here, um, really springs up and the TRV has a really finely geared uh, motor that pushes a plunger down onto the pin that then closes the flow into this part of the radiator here. So this is connected to the Zigbee hub that happens to be in the living room at the moment, just plugged into the wall. And the Zigbee hub talks to the home assistant that can control this uh, temperature up and down. There's a lot of other things like frost protection in there, but at the moment I'm just testing and getting used to turning the radiators on and off. I'm not even uh, fine tuning or calibrating. So in the morning, radiators come on about six o'clock. So uh, people getting ready for work, family getting ready for work, can, uh, can get the warmth of the, of the house. But at night, whilst the radiators may be on upstairs, I don't want the radiators on down here. So I'm gonna try and save money that way. Um, and that's about that. So this is, it's not badly made. Um, don't forget there's, um, there's batteries in here. Um, they're going to need changing between six and nine months um, and literally this, this screw just screws on. There's no plumbing involved. This screw just screws onto the, uh, the, the valve body. And most, most valve bodies it will fit but this one because it's quite a, an unusual one I needed to use the adapter and I've loctited the adapter onto the original thread to keep it there and this just drops down and screws on. Okay, just to describe what the apps are, um, Toya app and the Smart Life app, top left, are exactly the same thing. Toya seems to be feel more industrial, Smart Life is more uh, residential. So if I click on that, let's have a quick look at, say, there's my gateway, there's my dining room radiator, and there's that. So I can either click on that back there or go to the main list, click on dining room radiator, and we've got, that's at maximum 35 degrees. So let's go back, um, living room radiator, that's at more tolerable 21 degrees and a more affordable 21 degrees. You can choose the modes, auto, manual and off. And you can choose your timers uh, in there. This is if you don't go down the home system route. And you can calibrate your temperatures there. So I tend to calibrate into the middle. I haven't touched switch scale or frost protection yet. If I need frost protection in my house, there's a massive problem. It's child locks, um, self-explanatory. You don't want people fiddling with it or children fiddling with it. And then you flick that across and the Twizzler on top of the TRV stops working. So the only way to control that will be through the app. But they're all grown ups in this house or, or uh, negotiable children. So family admin sorts that out. We don't need the child lock. Oh, I'm trying to switch that off. There we go. And that's pretty much the app. Okay, that just about sums up the uh, adding of TRVs, commissioning and placing them on the home assistant. If anyone's got any questions, drop me a line and we'll see if we can answer them. Thank you.